Hello and welcome to the Cryptocurrency News Channel. Today I want to talk about a weird story. It has to do with NFTs. Now, we know that's non-fungible tokens, but this actually spin, this spans from 2019. It's about someone who spent $111,000 on an NFT F1 car. The crazy thing is he explains why he did it, because for $111,000, you can actually buy an F1 car, like a real one. So why did he buy a fake one instead of a real one? Well, let's actually take a look. So it's why I spent 111 k on an F1 car, NFT collector. So this was the buyer of last, last year's most expensive NFT has finally come forward. In May of 2019, roughly a year and a half ago, a non-fungible token representing the first digital F1 car minted for the blockchain game F1 Delta Time was sold for a record-breaking $110,000. The, the winner of the auction has just come forward, revealing why he brought the exclusive elusive NFT. The 111 Formula 1 car was the most expensive NFT sold in 2019. I would be kind of surprised. I'm sure there might be NFTs sold for more than that, but why would anyone, like, it just blows my mind someone would pay over $100,000 for an NFT car. And it's designed for the officially licensed game. The one-of-a-kind racer was produced in an official partnership with Formula One and marked a digital milestone. Up until now, the, the buyer has remained anonymous. So the guy's name is actually John Jordan, and this is from Cointelegraph. Details about the buyer were disclosed on Blockchain Gaming World podcast and uh, Emica Brands, the blockchain gaming firm that sold the NFT and created Delta Time, revealed the buyer was uh, the pseudo, uh, pseudonymous Meta Coven. Actually, no, John Jordan wasn't the person who actually bought the car. John Jordan was the person is the person that actually uh, talked and interviewed the guy that actually bought the car. The guy has the pseudo, uh, pseudonym Meta Coven. So Meta Coven is an angel investor, entrepreneur, and reported Ethereum whale. So he's an Ethereum whale and NFT collector. During the interview with podcast host John Jordan, the investor revealed that it wasn't even the most expensive purchase he had made and that he has not taken the digital car out for a spin on the digital track yet. So he's a digital car that he hasn't actually used yet. He, haven't even, he hasn't even made it. He hasn't actually even spun it on the digital track yet, which is kind of weird because I don't think it would get scratches on the digital track. I mean, just, just saying. He said that the brand and auction piqued his interest. So he basically is a really rich guy that basically, hey, I'm interested in this giant NFT thing. I'm going to buy it. A branded NFT was one of the first things that caught my eye, but I did not know the company. I did see this interesting bidding war developing, and I saw the auction. I noticed there was something interesting happening here. He explained that the appeal for NFTs for, for him is the uniqueness and story that accompanies it, adding, I could have bought a real car for this. And for $111,000, you could have bought a very, very nice car, probably like a high-class BMW. And that's what that makes the good stories, actually, at the end of the day. NFT is such a... as. NFTs such as the gem encrusted 111 can be raced in the game as well as stake to earn native REVV -E -E tokens. So if REVV -E ever pumps, this guy actually has it made. Uh, he might be staking the car to actually get the tokens. It's kind of like uh, uh, the Vim world. If you have S-class Vims, you can get uh, EHRTs. In a tweet, he elaborated on why NFTs mean so much to him. The way art has blossomed makes doubly sure that NFTs are perfect medium for crypto. This is because NFTs were and are so much fun. From an Urbit Galaxy to the F1 Delta Time 1 on 1 to estates full of promise in CV and DCL. As NFTs, I was collecting experiences, fully formed ones, as well as seeds of future experiences. I'm not really sure what kind of experience you get from owning a really expensive virtual car if you haven't even taken out for a spin. See, like that kind of logic from really rich people doesn't really make sense to me. I guess I could see why you want to buy something exclusive, but what what is what experience is there? You haven't even taken the car out for a spin on the virtual track yet. After nearly a year and a half, we finally know that Metacoven is the owner of the 111 and we couldn't be happier. He added that art is not made famous by artists themselves, it's made famous by collectors. I suppose the experience he's talking about is just owning this virtual thing. So the designer of the Ostinuous 111 race car, Ibram El Muhi, wrote a lengthy personal account of the auction and the ensuing hunt for the owner. He revealed that the auction was set in WETH, RAP ETH, which was priced at around $272 at the time. The winning bid of 419.5 ETH was auspicious as it equated to $111,000 with picture prices at the time. Today, ETH's price would work out at about $191,000, so ETH has gone up about 80-90%. Metacoven stated that he chose that price to leave the Easter egg for those trying to track him down, it's embellishing his remarkable story even earlier. Uh, further. So he basically bought it for the story, and now it's surfaced. It's pretty cool, but I mean, like, I don't know, like, what use is it? But the thing is, it could actually end up being a pretty good investment because a lot of times these things actually just grow more expensive over time. Kind of like basketball cards, right? 
Like, when Kobe Bryant was actually drafted, no one knew that he would become a superstar, but he did. And look at this. I have this mint condition, upper deck, uh, Kobe Bryant rookie card. This is like, I've seen this sell on Amazon, this in this exact condition, for about, you know, $60. And I bought a pack of these cards for like $5 back in the 1990s. Now, inflation has been going up, so that $5 is worth maybe about two fifty now. But definitely, like, if I were to sell my basketball cards right now, like all this Kobe Bryant and Allen Iverson rookie card stuff I have, I could get thousands of dollars. And I probably bought them for, like, at most 50 bucks back in the 90s. I probably have, like, four or five Kobe Bryant rookies, one or two Allen Iverson rookies. Iverson rookies are actually more uh, rare for me than Bryant rookies. And I have a bunch of, like, other rookies from that time period, uh, and plus some Michael Jordan cards, which probably are worth a bit of money now. So... You know, it actually might be worth it in the end, honestly. So I think like maybe in like 10 years, people will want that first NFT and someone's going to pay like over a million dollars for this NFT. So that's kind of what I have for it. I think it's an interesting story, but at the same time, it's not something that you and I can do because it costs too much money. But you know, buying some of these exclusive NFTs, if they're small ones, it's kind of like taking a dab at an like a stab at an investment, kind of like the Kobe Bryant rookie cards I was talking about, you know, pieces of plastic. You don't really know if the player's going to be big or not, but now, you know, like, post uh, like you know post Kobe Bryant world where he's uh, like an NBA all-star and you know like much loved by the LA Lakers his rookie cards are only going up in price and I have a bunch of them right now so uh, that's kind of like it might not be a bad investment in the end even if it costs $111,000 so that is the news for uh, today let me know what you think like and subscribe and hit that bell notifications button thank you and have a nice day